Hello my fellow YouTubers, welcome to another episode of Develop with WP. My name is Bobby Bryant and today we're going to finally finish off our Understanding WordPress Hooks mini-series uh, where we're going to cover filters. Uh, this video is brought to you by Red Bull because that's the only reason I'm still awake at this point. Uh, but let's get on with the show. Uh, for this video, uh, again, you know, we're going to cover just like we did with actions. We're going to show some really cool examples of, of how filters work. Um, if you remember from the first video, um, the difference is, is that you know, actions do something. It's, it's trying to tell WordPress to do something new, whereas a filter, you're trying to tell some WordPress to do something differently to something WordPress is already going to do, meaning some type of code or data already exists, and you're going to hook into WordPress take that data, manipulate it in some way, and output it again before WordPress outputs it so that you get a different result. Um, I think that's probably confusing, so that's why we're gonna do some code examples. So let me set the stage for you here. Um, normally, what I would do is use the WordPress filters, um, and this is something I was supposed to show that I haven't yet. If we go to the plugin API, um, you'll see that there is an actions list. And this list, oh, hang on, actions reference. Yeah, this lists all the action hooks that there are and the different areas in which they, uh, you know, these run in the admin. So there's some admin action hooks. Here's some post page and attachment action hooks. And the same thing applies for filters. So normally, you know, I would go in here, we would pick a, I clicked on the wrong link again, we'd pick a filter action and we'd do something in WordPress. Um, but I, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. What I've done is I've created a custom post. I've created a plugin that creates a custom post type called books, which you can see it's activated and the book, the books custom post type exists right here. And what I did to this plugin, which I'm going to show you really quickly. Um, if I do my, I'm still, I'm, I'm in the plugins folder for this site. If I look on here, you'll see the. Uh, da, 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 da. CPT filter is a file for a plugin. So let's open that. All right, and there's my file. So let's open this up in my editor. And what you're going to see here is my plug, my custom post up that I made. Uh, we're going to get to this code later, so none of this probably makes sense to you right now. That's fine. Um, what I want to show you is that um, with WordPress, we're learning how to use actions and filters. But one thing you can do is actually make your own actions and filters. Uh, and again, just disclaimer, this is way beyond the scope of this talk at this point. We'll, we'll probably get to this later. But just suffice it to say that I've created some filters that allow us to filter things like this singular variable. We can filter this plural variable. And then we can actually, I've actually wrapped a filter around all of these arguments that set up this custom post type, which allows us to actually key in and change any of the arguments around this custom post type. So long story short, I've got a custom post type that has its own custom hooks and we're gonna use those hooks to change how it acts. All right, the other thing I want to note is that I am using um, the 2015 theme. And when we make these changes, we're gonna be making them in functions.php. And uh, again, it's beyond the scope of this talk about child themes and when, and when you should or should not use child themes. Just suffice it to say that I am using a child theme in this example just because I want to uh, practice what I preach and this is a perfect use case for when you would want a, um, a child theme. So I am using a child theme. So let's get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is actually get out of this plugins folder uh, and go to my themes folder and open up my child theme. And again, there's only two files in here, my functions.php and my styles. I'm gonna open up the functions in my code editor. So here's where we're gonna make our code changes. 
Uh, you'll see all I'm doing so far is enqueuing the basic scripts that you're required to enqueue for a child theme. Okay, just like actions, we're going to create the shell of our function here, and we're going to prefix our function. We are going to give it a descriptive name. This one is going to be called uh, alter menu alter books icon. We're going to set that up. Then we're going to, unlike the actions, we're going to do add filter. And it's going to take the same parameters as the other um, add actions that we've been doing in the previous videos. So what are we doing? <laughs> we should probably cover that first. As you'll see, this custom post type is called books, and it has a picture of a guy with a tie. Um, and I don't know about you, but that's not a very good icon for books. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to WordPress. I'm going to Google it, but there's a, it's at wordpress.developer.org. And uh, WordPress has these things called dash icons. It's an icon set similar to what's in Bootstrap or the font awesome icon set. Uh, the beauty of the dash icons is they're already in WordPress. You don't have to upload any new you know, third-party libraries. You could just use them. And so as I scroll through here, I see this book icon. This looks like a much better icon for this custom post type. So again, a filter is going to change something that WordPress is already going to do. So WordPress is already going to make this post type and output an icon. So what we're going to is we're going to hook into this plugin and filter the arguments to make to change the output. In this case, we're going to change this icon. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to pass in something into this function. Uh, this is one of the differences between actions and filters. Because filters, you're usually doing something to something you have to pass something into your function so that it is available for you. And in this case, it's the args that we had defined, that were defined by the custom post type. And then we're going to target those args because it's an associative array, which we've kind of touched on a little bit, but not quite nearly as much as we need to. We're going to target a key in that associative array called menu icon. And then we're going to say, hey, WordPress, you know that menu icon? It'd be really cool if that like was something different. And in this case, it's this book. The cool thing about this website, too, is that once you click on something like the book, you can just copy this right here and use this in your, in your custom post type. And so we're going to put that right here. And then once we've taken this code or taken this uh, data and we've edited it, the last thing we need to do is return this data for um, for use oh, and I did mess this up semicolon ends a statement not a comma okay now we need to hook in um, in this example did I leave it open I don't think I did so in this example the, the hook we're going to use is a custom hook and it's something that I named <laughs> which I don't remember. Uh, do I remember I do know what it is I have it in my notes so here we go so I'm going to cheat a little bit uh, normally again you would be using a WordPress filter hook you'd look it up in the codex you'd find the one you want and then you'd use it in this case I'm using my own filter hook so there you go the next uh, argument is the function to be used same thing as we've been seeing over and over there you go so I'm going to save this this is in our functions.php I'm going to refresh this page and this icon should change change to a book and I get an error. Double. Oh, that's because I'm an idiot. The equal arrow is like when you're setting it is how you would set these um, associated arrays up. But in this case, we're just telling it that it, it equals it. Syntax will get you every time. There you go. Book has been changed. So now our icon looks a whole lot better. So let's do something else. Uh, let's say we want to be we want to be old school. We want to we want to re rename this to books with a Z. All right. So we're going to name this books with a Z. Again, we call our function. We prefix it. And what do we want to call this? Um, change label. 
set up our shell. All right, again, we need to pass something into it. In this case, we're passing in a variable called plural. Uh, it would probably help if I spelt it right. And then we're going to, this one's actually a lot easier. So then we're going to say, hey, you know that variable plural, which um, stands for, currently it stands for books, B-O-O-K-S. It's just a string that says books. We're going to say, hey, we would like that to equal whole bunch of O's with a Z and then again we're going to return that variable back to WordPress I have spelled it wrong again all right we're going to do our filter again this is a custom filter that I created And then the function to be changed is our function that we're calling change label. Okay. Save this, go back to WordPress, refresh, and this title should change. And it does. Books. So much cooler. I don't know about you, but that's one cool custom post type for books. All right, so let's recap after my poor humor. So what we've done is we've shown two examples of how to use an add action hook. Uh, in this case, it was a custom custom hook for a custom plugin. Uh, but regardless, the, the principles remain the same. You define a function. Generally, with a filter, you have to pass in some type of data that you're going to manipulate. You do what you're going to do to that data. It's like, for example, here we change this args menu icon to equal something else. We then return that content back to WordPress and then tell WordPress where to hook in and use that that hook that when to execute this code all right so thanks uh, thanks for watching this video I hope you uh, learned a little bit more about filters I'm not sure what the next video is actually going to be about we're probably going to get off this tangent on our basic um, basics we've been covering here and get into really building our jobs um, plug-in uh, and one of the first things that we will have to do for that jobs plugin is create a custom post type. So a lot of that code you saw in this video that was, may have looked like you know a different language to you will really become more clear in the coming videos. Uh, again, not exactly sure what the next video will be, but it will be something related to what we really are here to build. So again, thanks for watching this video. Uh, please, if you liked it, uh, if, if you liked it, then like it, share it. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Do what you can to get the word out about um, about the videos. I really appreciate any help I could get. If you if something was unclear or if you were having some trouble trying to replicate some of the code that I did, um, you know, just drop me a comment uh, and I will do my best to try and help you out. Uh, I I really enjoy the comments and getting to interact with uh, other um, other YouTube fans. Uh, so uh, just just let me know if you have any questions and I'll be doing my best. Uh, to get you an answer. So again, thanks and I'll see you in the next video.